Hello. Uh, can you guys hear me? Hello. Uh, it's me again, uh, Michael, and I'm here to do another stream of designing for terrarium. So let's begin. Um, so over here, I have Photoshop open as usual, and basically, I have three files open. I'll show you guys what we'll be doing. So uh, it's something like this. Uh, we'll use basically 3D models, low poly, to create different designs that, um, yeah, for the for a terrarium. And um, so I'll go through the reference page first. So all these models are basically potential models that could be modified uh, into something else. So these are all 3D low poly models. And the reason why we want a low poly model is to keep it simple and cohesive throughout the entire um, landscape. So over here we have a bunch of different things. We have rocks, uh, more rocks. We have uh, tree logs. I don't know what this is, alien tomb plants. And these are all labeled just for um, making it more convenient for when you hand it off to other uh, designers. So you have here more uh, cactus and then these are creature base flowers more monsters and more flowers over here we have the same thing more alien plants alien plants and we have some um, I guess normal plants if you want to call it and here we have another fire creature here we have a jungle pack and all these are just assets we'll, we'll be looking at to create something like this. So last, or the week, two weeks before, uh, we had something similar, which looked kind of like this. So we painted these rather than using a model. So this time we'll be using models to really fasten up the pace for development. So painting, although it is more um, nice, uh, 3D is faster and a lot easier to hand off to uh, modelers when they start developing. So that's something to keep in mind. But it is always good to start off with uh, 2D just to get an idea of what you want. So over here, I have a blank canvas. Um, I'm gonna change the background to gray, dark gray. And we'll start off by just grabbing some, basically some plants we find interesting. And when we start off, it doesn't have to be anything. Uh, just any plants will do. So I have it all in one layer and they're on a transparent layer, so it's easy for me to lasso tool them out. <laughs> Command C, not Command C, Control C, and Control V. And there, I have my first cactus right here. And now let's look at another, mm, another interesting shape or plant we can use. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if you guys can hear me. Um, hello. All right, so, um, Okay, okay, perfect. Thank you for confirming that. I was wondering. 
Um, welcome to the stream. So, again, back to where we are. We have a cactus, and then maybe we want, on top of the cactus, we want some... Some of these would be nice, I think. So I'm doing all this with a, a mouse, a mouse. No, that's not what I meant. So <laughs> what I meant is that it is faster to use images that are 3D based for your 3D modeler because then they know exactly which uh, 3D model to base off of. Whereas 2D, they might have to like find something on their own. And here we're referencing from a direct uh, 3D model. Um, but 2D will always be faster for production. But in this case, um, I'm going to show you guys all a another fast way for uh, 3D, but also photo bashing kind of method. I know photo bashing has been like uh, hated by some people just because they think it's kind of like cheating. No, I get what they mean by when they say it feels like it's cheating, but when you have a tight schedule, you know, you got to do what you got to do. So over here, I'm looking at my cactus and I'm trying to find more interesting shapes. Photo bashing. So that's quite a popular term in concept art. So it's all about basically getting photos and turning them into your design. But you have to, I guess in a sense, you have to change it enough so then it doesn't, you're not copying other people, right? It has to be kind of like a, your own take, but with a photo reference directly on it. Um, so you're not referring to the photo, but you're actually using the photo to, to create like an extension of your design, um, if that makes sense. I feel like I'm not describing this right, so you should probably Google the term. But from what I've seen, a lot of people photo bash. They use texture of mountains. Um, yeah, they use textures of mountains to, you know, to add the detail to their concept. Um, here I'm looking at the plants. It looks a bit too uh, normal. We want a more alien plant, so then I'm gonna try adding some alien to it. Hopefully, we'll get something interesting. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Something like that. Is this all underneath? Um, a cool trick right here is to actually click on this. I don't know if you can see the button uh, right here. It's called lock transparent pixel. And what you can do is that when, whenever you lock the pixel, you can't paint outside of it. So whatever you paint will be within the pixel of your layer. So let's use another color. Let's use red. So I clicked on this button, uh, lock pixel, and I can color on my layer and it, it would only affect the layer I have. So that's a really cool trick when you want to blend two different photos together. So let's see. So right now I'm blending the red with the, um, the yellow. So that way it looks like the plant is, you know, a part of the creature and I don't want to focus too much on the creature it's more about the stem or um, making the plant look more alien like uh, and then after that we want to just 
tweak our color a bit just a tiny bit to make it more out of this world now ch -ch -ch -ch. so I think when you have green or any color that is a bit off of the um, your green leaves it it gives off the vibe of an alien uh, not all the time though so be careful of that so over here we have uh, our first tree so with our first tree I want to have a platform so I'm actually gonna grab something here so to save time whoops to save time I'm actually gonna grab the platform I had on the other layer and I'm gonna use that as a size reference so when you have when you have a bunch of plants in this area you want to see the scale that it would have um, it will be in when when you see it inside the game so I'm actually gonna crop the leg move it up a bit whoops so I have to merge the layers crop out the leg there we go now it kind of looks like it belongs in that perspective I want to have one plant here another plant up in the front this one I want it to be humongous doesn't matter what size we just want a lot of different sizes just want to tweak it a bit Move that layer down. Yeah, I mean, it's supposed to look like they're harmless at the top. But then once you get, um, I guess, closer to it, you'll notice all the crab legs. And yes, as I mentioned before, I have a bad habit of uh, merging all the layers just because uh, I'm used to it, but if you're not a fan of merging the layers, uh, feel free to like do it your own way. Honestly, there's no like right way when it comes to all this stuff. Um, yeah, it's a really bad habit. Like if you hand off your my file to other people, they're gonna be like, uh, "Why is this guy?" merging all the layers so over here uh, I'm actually creating a group and I'll call it tree one and that way I can move it entirely as a group I'm gonna copy the group and I'm gonna uh, again merge the group I know that's a horrible thing to do um, but that allows me to keep an original so I have a, the original files with all the layers but I have an extra layer or extra uh, copy of the the tree one that I can just now control you to bring up the hue and saturation and then I can just test out different color variation I think this is very useful when it comes to um, just seeing what color schemes you want to go with and sometimes Sometimes, sometimes it's hard to say if you don't actually see it, right? Like if you say that, oh, it might look better in blue. But then when you actually get to blue, you're like, oh, doesn't look that nice. Like this blue right here looks a bit too, too dark. So I don't think it really matches the whole... Uh, happy vibe in a sense so over here it looks uh, 
a lot more vibrant that's the word that green looks good color gradient clip to the group uh, let's try it color gradient Do you mean like a, a hue saturation like that clip to the group? I think you, it would just clip like a normal layer. That's what I think. So then if I click here, let me see if I can adjust the layer. Can I adjust it? No. Adjustments, oh, it's right here. Yeah, it will work as a normal layer. So that's the benefit of keeping one group containing all the layers and then just merge all the other layers. So when you change the hue and saturation of the group with a clipping mask, it would still be the same as it would for here. So that's convenient. Um, the green looks nice. All right, why don't we make one that is green? So did you know you can actually extend your canvas? This one I wish I knew a long time ago, but you can actually extend your canvas. So if you need more space in your Photoshop uh, canvas, you can actually press C and that will bring up the uh, the crop tool, and you can actually actually just expand your canvas like that. I wish I knew this sooner, um, but better t whoops better know it now than never, right? So sap green. All right, let's try green. Are we talking about the bottom being green or? the bottom being green or the leaves that one looks pretty nice I think the bottom looks a bit too bright there we go that looks pretty good um yeah so now we have one set of um trees uh and it only took us 20 minutes so then Referring back to what I had before with um, the 2D one uh, with a blend mode. Adjustment layer set with a blend mode. Hmm, I'm not sure what you meant by blending it differently. So you want an extra layer that would blend differently? like overlay kind of thing. Would I blend it like that? Soft light, maybe color burn. Um, that could be a cool idea. Ooh, that one looks really good. Um, Although I think this would, this will look good on the, um, on the first one, right? Actually, what do you think? This one or this one? Green or no green? I kind of like green, but it doesn't feel like dangerous. Whereas red feels a lot more like don't come near me, that kind of thing, so. Um, okay, let's keep it for red uh, for now. Uh, and we'll move on, so different green. Yeah, I think, I think different green would work better. So we'll come back to this. Uh, remember to save your work, so I'm going to save it as um, a 3D paint file. 3D Paint 4, just because I have another file going on. Um, 
let's leave it for now and we'll start with a new design. So the fun thing about this is that you can always go back to it if you don't like it. Um, so it's always good to like uh, sidetrack a bit, do some other design. And if you come up with something nicer, you can always add on to it. So let's see here. Um, let's have a regular tree. I had a pretty cool idea that I had in mind. Um, it was a tree on top of a pumpkin. <laughs> that sounds silly, but <laughs> once you see it, you will be mind blown. Hopefully. Um, everything we're doing right now is kind of like just going with the flow. Um, when you design, you don't want to be stressed. So over here, I'm looking at the uh, warp tool. If you ever use the um, warp tool, you'll know how convenient it is just to like shape your object. Um, so here, I am going to blend it again. So same method, same method as we did. Lock the pixel and then blend it with red. And just like that, we have a pumpkin with a tree on top. And I'm just gonna use the brush to color in the horns. You can also always erase parts you don't find necessary. Like uh, your modeler should be able to figure the smaller details out once you have the bigger idea. Because right now you're trying to tell, give them the general idea of what you want in the plant. So once you have that, you should be good. Um, yeah. So now I have a, a plant with a monster at the bottom. And now I want to add something else to it. Mm, strawberry. So you're wondering, okay, how does this fit into the whole picture? Well, strawberry doesn't have to be a strawberry. Uh, it can be Um, it can be a light bulb. Do you find the relationship between cosmic artists and model art is more common? Um, it really depends on the work uh, that you're given. Sometimes you need to have you need to have like the concept artist be more, I guess, creative, and then your modeler should tell you. Uh, what is achievable but then you don't at another time you will want to have basically just the 3d modeler letting you know that these are the restraints so you can build around it for a faster production I think in my opinion but yes they are both very collaborative they have to always talk to each other about like what they have in mind so if you're not like in the same room you want to leave notes for your um, for your 3d modeler so like over here I have these reference and I'm, I'm leaving notes saying that these are the uh, the packs that you'll find the assets from I haven't labeled these yet but uh if they look at the reference page, they'll know that, oh, these are the uh, the models that we um, are using for this plant, right? So then that way that when they're modeling, they know that you're not just doing this from your imagination and then they have to basically build an entire 3D model using your drawing. Um, yeah. 
So, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the <laughs> strawberry tree. I think it's missing something. It's missing probably some mushroom looking shapes. All right, let's add that in. Oops. So if you're looking at my layer um, window, you should know that I probably have like quite some layers going on. Um, and I think that's fine at this point. Like as long as you remember your layers and you yourself know what you're doing with your layers. Um, I mean, if you don't know what you're doing, you should probably stop and take a break uh, and figure out what you're doing. So again, you need to have all these uh, different small sizes to live around the tree. So if you zoom in a bit, So you want to have smaller shapes contrast with the uh, the bigger shapes. So if you look at it as a whole, it would look a bit more, I guess, more fun. I feel like the leaves need to be a lot more spread out. Kind of like that. Like covering the pumpkin of some sort. Mm. So again, you shouldn't dwell too much on all the detail first. Right now you're looking at the general concept and whenever you see something you like, you can always go back and tweak it. So I think uh, we need a, a third color that would contrast with the blue. So green actually looks pretty decent. Uh, more like um, aqua, kind of like that. And then we have our layers and then we have our strawberry Let's merge all the strawberries so I remember layer 8 is strawberry I'm not merging them without thinking so uh, the blue light no that looks pretty fun I, I think I like the blue like the cyan that looks fun enough to for them for the design. And I think the orange at the bottom of the tree feels a bit too too brown. Like it feels too normal, and we want a color that fits with the whole alien theme. So I think a purplish hue would match. Oh, I forgot. So after I have tree one, I'm gonna create another folder. I'll call it tree one group. There we go. So again, I'm gonna go back and grab my, whoops. I'm gonna go back here and grab my, Floor, my ground. I'm gonna stretch it up a bit, just enough to fit same size. And now I have a pumpkin mushroom strawberry tree. Beautiful. So I'm just gonna erase the bottom a bit 
just to blend in with the ground. There we go. And once I have that, I'm gonna name it copy and then merge the tree. So I copy the three layers at the bottom, the plant or leaf mushrooms, the strawberry and the branch. So I basically merge all those layers together so I can resize all three at once. And you can move it left and right, make some variation. Oops. And it's also very useful to learn all the shortcut of Photoshop. I know that sounds like a, a hassle, but then once you get like the flow of Photoshop, like the shortcut, everything becomes faster, like everything. Like if you're ever wondering how people do things so fast, that is why you learn the shortcut. On here, I have kind of like a pumpkin feel, but then um, they're not really pumpkins. They're like monsters. Um, and yeah, that's good to know. Um, you have tree two, so I'm going to name it tree two. Do the same thing again, copy the tree, and then I'm going to merge the group so it turns into a layer. How do I think they move? Um, if you ever played the uh, octopus game when you were like in elementary and you're like an octopus and you're just like in one spot waving your hands, I think that's how they move. Like all these, um, I guess the, the branch or like the wings on the side would like wiggle as you approach. And then it will kind of like light up the, uh, the strawberries, like a flicker. You know, I think that would be kind of interesting. Ooh, I kind of like that. A bit darker. So that looks pretty decent. I think the most fun is um, actually just changing all the colors. That's like the most fun for me. Like um, you can just change all the colors you want like blue and orange kind of conf complex How's that? I think that looks decent. So from afar, these look like plants, but if you look up close, they're like creatures. Um, that's a pretty cool idea, I think. Mm. The pink pumpkins. Oh yeah. So um. I like those too, actually. Um, so now we are at a stage where we can add visual effects. So then um, there's a difference between having the actual plan and adding on visual effects. So for me, I'm adding on effects um, that would like mimic how the plants would behave inside a game. So over here, I'm adding glow. Doesn't look that nice right now, um, but you will soon see the power of blend mode. So color dodge is pretty good actually, but um, not multiply, what am I doing? Overlay. I think overlay or um, soft light definitely brings out the glow like soft light it's either soft light or color dodge 
Um, what do you think? I think if I do color dodge, it has to be a bit lower opacity. But soft light is pretty good as it is. Mm, I'm actually going to go with color dodge. Like that. So these are called, these add-ons are called visual effects, VFX. Just because uh, when you design these, you don't want to have it for your perfect. So yeah, when you design these, you don't want to have it for your 3D modeler and they don't know what actually, um, how it actually looks like without the glow, right? If you have the visual effects all the time, they're not gonna know how it looks like without it. Or they can like imagine it themselves, but but then they will have to go through the whole process of doing that. So you wanna, <clears throat> before you add the visual effects, you wanna have the base finish. Mm, yeah. I think we still have time to do one more. <coughs> Sorry. Cool. So let's look at this again and let's see with a fresh eye what we can do. Um, what are some shapes that looks interesting? We want something less monster looking. These look pretty, but it's monster based. So I want something else that just feels more organic on its own. I feel like the tree branch at the bottom would work. This one. Actually, I'm going to go back to the cactus. I lied, no cactus. No, I lied again. Let's use a cactus. I think they just offer a more simple shape that we can use. I'm going to scale this up. And now I want to add a kind of have an eggplant in mind. Not an actual eggplant, the one you eat, but more like the chicken egg plant so kind of like that but a lot more up a lot more round so I think I have to fix the perspective a lot more um, over here you can use the uh, whoops, selection tool and you select the circle. And I'm just gonna upscale this circle into an egg. And there we go. Again, you don't have to clean up the edges for now for now but you do have to later on once you have an idea
Hello? Like it's a single mic instead of double. Can testing, testing. Yeah, that, that did fix it. Okay. Which is dumb. Sure. <laughs> sure, fine. All right, we're... So at some point, it'll probably start we're back. doubling. And if it does start doubling... Then I can... There. Okay. Perfect, we're back. Um, yeah, we had mic issues last time, too, but... We're good now. So... Let's get back to designing. So we have our awesome, uh, we have our eggplant. <laughs> um, we have our eggplant and now we need something else to make it even more interesting. I think I found eggplant, yeah. So I think I'm going to add some flowers to it, maybe like that. It doesn't have to be much, it just has to be enough. Oh boy. So let's actually group the tree. Tree to group. All right. Now we have flowers. That will make it more interesting. So I think we can have the flowers to be like gigantic. Not that big maybe. Kind of like that, and you raise the edge. Mm, I think that makes a and like a cute little plant to contrast with our really evil plant. So layer 10 is our eggplant. I'm gonna merge all the eggplant. And basically change the colors to fit with <laughs> the whole theme. So I actually think the tree branch looks pretty good uh, with less color. Like that. Cool. And those look very cute. And merge all the flowers. Now we need to get our background again. Command C, Command V. Get our background. Again, um, this is the fastest way for now. Like, I mean, you can obviously draw these and copy it, but from what we're doing, I think this might be a faster method. Don't quote me on that. Um, but yeah. We came up with three different designs in less than an hour. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna just Command J and merge all the layers. Now I have another plant that looks like that. I'm gonna shrink it. Command J again. Make it humongous. 3D is faster, 3D is superior. No, actually no. I don't think 3D will ever be as quick as 2D. At least not in the near future. Again, don't quote me on that. Um, I don't know how fast technology goes. Uh, 
when I think when like ZBrush came out, everyone was just like, oh, now we can sculpt like um, like how how we would paint, you know, with a lot of detail. Um, but yeah, we will see. We will definitely see in the future. Like when, I think when VR came out, like uh, virtual reality headset came out, a lot of people were just saying um, how concept art would be like more in the VR world because then people can actually experience the concept. But again, you know, um, I don't think it's like cheap enough for people to just buy that and be like, okay, I'm gonna use that as our as our like uh, our concept testing, right? Because it's still pretty expensive. Like all these tools, although like it's efficient, they're quite expensive to like get. So a lot of times, 3D is just slow because of the expensive tool. Like, um, I think ZBrush costs like $300 or something. Um, I'm not sure though. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't. I mean, a lot of people are like trying to become concept artists. I mean, I certainly hope 2D never dies, but you never know. Like, um, I think same with um, animation, right? I think a lot of animations are stop doing like traditional 2D and then they're like using 3D and then a lot of people like know 3D. And then my friend at like Sheridan, he's like, ah, oh, man, I really want to do like a, a 2D animation, like a traditional 2D animation. And I was like, I don't know. I love the 2D animation. Like, honestly, it feels a lot more, like, authentic. It feels like there's effort behind it. And then 3D, it's, it's too, like, rigid, in my opinion, for animation. Unless you're, like, Pixar, then I have nothing to say. But most animation that uses, like, 3D are too, still too rigid. But we never know, right? Like... If it starts taking over, then let's pray we still have 2D. We can start a new trend, actually, like the bring back the 2D trend. Hmm, that looks pretty good. Hmm. 2D for life. That's very true, 2D for life. I think I want one tree with... Oh yeah, for sure. Like logos and stuff, right? After Effects, all that stuff. Um, so over here, I'm just making a branch, like a dark color branch. Just because I think like the bright color, even though it looks nice, um, we could try a darker branch. Something like that. More blue, 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 blue purplish. I think that might look pretty cool. Yeah, movies, I don't know how they like do the um, visual effects, but most of them are like definitely 3D. Just cause, um, 
yeah faster right it's, it's faster for them I guess it really depends on the platform um, just cause like movies you use um, like uh, live actors so it's kind of hard to mix 2D with live I, I don't know has anyone done that before 2D with live actors was it like Bugs Bunny that did it I'm not too sure Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really good. Like um how they blended the uh the two D with uh live. Yeah. I remember seeing it when I was young and then I thought, hey, that's pretty neat how they can like do two D with live actors. Mm, okay. <laughs> what really how was it just like never expect 2d to be alive that kind of thing You know, watching like when you watching these when you're a kid, you don't really like see it as a problem, and then you think it's funny. Yeah, you think it's funny, but then like when you're like, just like when you like start aging, yeah, you're like, ah, uh, what is wrong? What's going on? Um. I mean, even bad movies, I think, has um, has something innovative, right? I mean, look at the room. People, um, James Franco made a movie based on that and got an like, Oscar for it, was it? I know, right? Nowadays, you can do anything um, cool how does that look I think we did pretty good we have some some typical not typical but funny looking tree uh, strawberry base pumpkins uh, eggplants. These are like my favorite, honestly, eggplants. Um, but yeah. I don't know. I mean, we can definitely come back to these. But I think so far it looks pretty good, right? Um, again, we are um, aligned with the whole theme. That's for sure. Alien plants that look um, vibrant and fun to explore. But yeah. Um, I think that's it today, right? Let's wrap it up here. And next time, we'll be back again to do more tree design. And definitely look at more reference. Um, thanks for tuning in today and uh, hope you keep watching us next time. Um, we'll be back.
more to the gold to the